Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts on Monday, got schooled in constitutional law after she said that Washington, D.C. should become a state. It's not the first time she said it. A lot of morons on the left say it. And Warren claims to be a lawyer. Well, she also claimed that she was Native American. Look at how that worked out for her. It turns out that I'm probably more Native American than she is. Warren is a perfect example of how ignorant the majority of members of Congress are on how the government is supposed to run according to the Constitution. The thing that they take an oath to uphold and defend, they don't even know what the hell's in it. She sent out a tweet by itself with no context whatsoever saying, D.C. should be a state, and she caught a lot of hell for it. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, where we are the antidote to the daily onslaught of radical woke Marxist propaganda. So Chief Crazy Bitch from Massachusetts once again showed the world that she has no idea what's inside the Constitution. Think about it. It was only five words, and with so few words... She exposed herself as a clueless cluck because it is written directly in the Constitution that D.C. cannot become a state. Article 1, Section 8 lists the 18 enumerated powers that the federal government has. Folks, that means that anything outside of that, uh, we want to create a health care system. Oh, is that part of the 18? No, it's not. Well, then fuck off. You, you can't do it. Okay. For liberals watching, the word enumerated means listed or numbered in a list. It means that only what is on that list when they say enumerated. Okay. Among the enumerated powers, it mentions the creation of a district. That's why it's called the District of Columbia. Okay. It says specifically, quote, to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district, not exceeding 10 miles square as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. The reason the founders created a district is because they didn't want the federal government to be beholden or to have any ties to any single state. This is very simple. Elizabeth Warren is a very simple person. You would think that she would have got it. So it had to be a neutral zone where representatives from all the states could meet and conduct government business. If D.C. became a state, then it could no longer be the nation's capital because it would have a favoritism to itself as a state, would it not? Chief Spreading Bull and the rest of the lunatics on the left only want D.C. to become a state so that they get another congressman and two more senators to help the Democrat Party keep a majority in the Senate. Now, the Constitution can be changed, but to do that, you have to go through the amendment process. The Congress cannot just vote to make D.C. a state. It's just like they couldn't vote to make abortion law. They don't have that right in the 18 enumerated powers. There are a lot of elected officials that don't know this. This is very basic stuff, folks. If you get elected to Congress or even to the White House, the first thing you should know is what are the 18 enumerated powers because you need to know what you can and cannot do. But they don't care. And it is an indictment of the people who vote these idiots into office all the time. What has happened is that over the years, a bunch of morons have been elected to Congress who don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. And they propose bills that they have no authority giving themselves powers in those bills. The House Republicans should create a rule and say, before you propose any bill before the House, you have to go through this little subcommittee that will make sure that everything in your bill falls in line with the 18 enumerated powers in Article 1, Section 8. Or that they fall under the powers of any of the amendments of the Constitution where the federal government went to the states and asked them for permission to take that specific power from the states. And the states said yes. I honestly think that bottleneck alone put at the very beginning of the process of proposing a bill before Congress would save the American taxpayers hundreds of billions of dollars every year on wasteful spending on things that are not really allowed. There was a reason that our founding fathers put only 18 powers into the Constitution. Anyone who has studied the Constitution through history of our founding era 
knows that the federal government was created only to be an agent to the states. What? It's true. It was created to assist the states in issues of nationhood so that the states didn't have to worry about it. I'm going to real quickly read from Mark Levin's book, Ameritopia, where he points out how off the constitutional path we have become and how our federal government has become a leviathan where over 90 percent of what it does is not listed in the 18 enumerated powers. Mark wrote, inside the home, the federal government regulates washing machines, dryers, dishwashers, dishwasher detergents, microwave ovens, toilets, shower heads, heating and cooling systems, refrigerators, freezers, furnace, fans and boilers, ceiling fans, dehumidifiers, light bulbs, certain renovations, fitness equipment, clothing, baby cribs, pacifiers, rattles and toys, marbles, latex balloons, matchbooks, bunk beds, mattresses, mattress pads, televisions, radios, cell phones, iPods, and other digital media devices, computer components, video recording devices, speakers, batteries, battery chargers, power supplies, stereo equipment, garage door openers, lawn mowers, lawn darts, pool slides, etc., etc., etc. The federal government also regulates toothpaste, deodorant, dentures, and most things in and around the medicine cabinet. And he goes on, but I'm going to spare you that. Because you get the point. The federal government is into things that it has no business and no right being involved in. About 90% of it. And every time the federal government gets involved in something, it always costs you, the taxpayer, more money. So in essence, the Congress violates the Constitution every day. They're abusing their powers in Congress, and they're giving you the bill to pay for their lawlessness. Don't you want someone representing you who knows what the hell is going on in government? The leftists who are crying about D.C. becoming a state don't give a rat's ass about the people living in D.C., even though they tell you that they do. They're not being represented. Sure they are. It's an argument based on gaining power for the Democratic Party. Democrats will do anything to get an unfair advantage. It's the name of the game for them. I'll tell you what. Take the reddest state in the union, and it should split into two red states. How would Lizzie Warren like that? She needs to go back to the law school where she graduated and demand a refund. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for spending time with us. We'll see you in the next one.